Luca Joe here for another infamous unboxing video because unboxing videos are the beauty pageants of war games and today we'll be unboxing the conquistadors the Spanish conquest of the Americas 1518 to 1548 a game designed by John Southard he's the designer of Tokyo Express and Carrier published in the 80s by Victory Games and this is a game published by Compass Games, which I just received because I backed the Kickstarter. And this is a game about the conquest of the New World by the Spanish. It's not an exploration game. It's not a colonization game. It focuses on the conquest. And here we see the back of the box with a picture of the map. It is a car-driven game. And we also see uh, some of the counters and a quote by... Francisco Pizarro, the conquistador that conquered the Incan Empire. I have not come here for such reasons. I have come to take away their gold. And this is what this game is about. It's about uh, conquering the uh, empires, the uh, peoples that are uh, populating the New World, and taking their gold. And each player represents a different group of Spanish conquistadors. And here we see the box. It is a three inch box. And uh, well, who doesn't like three inch boxes? And um, this big box is necessary because the components are substantial and it includes two mounted map boards, as we will see. And here we see the front of the box. If you want to see what's inside the box, buy your own game or stick around because I'm going to open this one right now and here we see the components two d6s one red one blue the game includes 130 strategy cards and these are the cards we will look at them in more detail later they have this green band so there's a substantial number of strategy cards 130 in total and then there's these asset cards which improve the resources of your expeditions and the game also includes a rule book it's a glossy paper and let's take a look at the rule book now here we see the rule book the game comes in two flavors a basic game and, uh, and also a what is called a standard game that has uh, more chrome and uh, I, I find of course the standard game more compelling and it doesn't seem much more complex than the basic game. The basic game rules run up to page 16 then you have the basic game scenario and then the standard game rules start in page 17 and you have things in the standard game like pesos and debt you have also division of gold legends which introduce these uh, uh, fabulous places the spanish thought existed in the new world like el dorado and and things like that which is kind of interesting then you have of course malaria and then you have the standard game scenario there's solitaire rules for a uh, particular solitaire scenario that the game brings then we have a bibliography and the design notes and it all comes at 24 pages game also included one page of errata so that's not bad at all the game includes four counter sheets the counters are five eighths of an inch each counter sheet brings 108 counters so that's a total of 432 counters between all four sheets let's take a look at each one of the sheets here we see the conquistadors and these are the historical uh, uh, characters that you have in the game that led the uh, spanish uh, uh, troops and uh, you got hernan cortez francisco pizarro Vasco Núñez de Balboa and others that are very famous and you have them depicted there and then you have certain types of uh, we can say 
uh, units that form the expedition. You have horsemen, and they have a strength of eight, and you also have uh, soldiers. And let's show that strength of two there. And then finally, you have also cannons. And then there's markers to keep track of any morale hits that your expedition may suffer. And the graphic artist here is Nut Grunitz, and I really like the artwork. You see there the uh, Lancer on horse, then you have the, uh, the Spanish uh, soldier the, with a shield and sword, and the other one with an arquebus, as well as the cannons of uh, the times. Very nicely done counters, and they are substantially thick also. On the back of counter sheet one, the only counters that are printed are those uh, to keep track of morale hits. Now we go to counter sheet number two, and let's take a closer look. Here we see counters uh, that are typical of Indian empires here, and you see that uh, each of the Indian empires will have a king and a capital city. There's also markers for cities. And uh, part of the uh, challenge in this game is for the conquistadors to make alliances with the natives. And uh, you'll see that some conquistadors have better diplomacy skills than others. So you have markers that you place on cities when they become your allies. Remember here, each player uh, represents a different group of conquistadors, each competing to score uh, more victory points or to win the game. You also have to gain favor with the governor. And there's certain events that uh, will make the governor distrust you and may cause him to issue an arrest warrant. And uh, you may lose conquistadors uh, that way in the game. We have victory point markers as well as pesos. That's the uh, coin currency in the game. And there's also debt. And debt is reflected uh, as part of the standard game. Now here we see mosquito counters because there's a malaria and its ill effects represented in the game also. And then we have the Indian, uh, let's say, uh, fighting soldiers. And you have their strengths, 50 uh, combat strength points, 40 different denominations. You pull them from a cup, so their strength will vary. And finally, you have uh, some even with the strength of five. Here we see the back of counter sheet two with discovered markers. And you'll see that in this game, uh, your expeditions have to discover whatever is in each space that they enter. And we'll talk about that a little later. Now we're in counter sheet number three. We have city and town markers as well as villages. And each one of these uh, has different die roll modifiers in terms of uh, discovery and other game effects. And then we have the plundered out markers. So when... Um, the Spanish have uh, sacked a particular space. You mark it with one of these markers. And of course, they're looking for gold. And here we have different denominations of gold markers. An impulse marker. This is an, a game that turns are divided into impulses. And a neat thing about this game is that it's a variable impulse game. You don't know when the turn is going to end. So that's a lot of uncertainty right there. And here we see the back of counter sheet number three. So this is counter sheet number four. More gold markers, discovered markers, morale hits. More uh, markers to keep track of debt, pesos, and victory points. Plundered out markers, village markers. More Spanish horsemen. Then you got food markers because... Uh, you have to keep your troops fed, otherwise they will succumb to the effects of starvation. When the, the uh, action impulse ends suddenly, because that's 
part of the turn that you don't know exactly when it's going to end, you move to the starvation phase and you check to see if you can feed your troops. If not, you'll suffer those ill effects. And then we have counters here for the legends. And these are uh, events that not necessarily happened, but the Spanish believed that they were true. And uh, you have Ponce de Leon, for example. He was searching uh, in what is now Florida for El Dorado. And of course, he didn't find it. But you have uh, the option of playing with these uh, legends in the game. Then you have here markers for plunder attempts and gold rolls. And here we see the back of counter sheet four. The game includes two pairs of identical player aid uh, cards. We will take a closer look at them after we take a look at the map so that uh, when we look at the specific tables, you'll have uh, the map as context and it'll make more sense. Here we see the maps. They are mounted map boards. There's a northern map and a southern map. You don't actually have to place them in that particular orientation because of what you will see. It will be easy to play the game even if you place them side by side, which is the way that I will place them. So let's pause the game for now and set up the map. And here we see the map set up side by side to the left the northern map and to the right the southern map and you can easily play the game like this with no problem because all movement from north to south has to go through Pont Panama which you see here and Panama also appears in the uh, northern uh, side of the southern map here So let's take a closer look at the map features and we'll start with the northern map. Northern map has the records track where you keep track of victory points and uh, other matters and it also has the impulse track and here you record each impulse and you see that this is a variable impulse game. You will be guaranteed uh, impulses one, two, and three, but at the end of the third impulse, then you have to roll to see if the turn ends right there, and you roll 2d6, so it's pretty unlikely, but uh, it's about a 9% chance. And then you have, uh, in turn four, it ends there on a two through five. On turn five, it's a two through seven. That's 58%. Then turn six and seven, and the game, uh, the turn will end with a 2 through 10 after impulse number 7. And you can see that the map has many round-shaped spaces connected by lines. And in this game, there are no ship counters because it is assumed that the Spaniards can sail with impunity, uh, throughout the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and uh, the Atlantic. And then you see the land spaces, and they have numbers from 0 to 4. This represents different levels, and uh, it always starts at 0 when you're coming from the sea, then you go to 1, and you see that this one doesn't connect with this four. You have to go to this other one, then to this two, then to this three, then to this four. And while you're moving into an undiscovered space, you have to stop and you have to discover what's in it. And the higher the number, the better the chance that you are going to discover a large city or a a, an empire and of course you're searching for gold and uh, gold is more likely in one of these higher spaces but you don't know what you're going to find in these lower ones and maybe the uh, Ma Mayan empire won't be here as it was historically and it will be found uh, more to the north or more to the south so that is a mechanic that gives the game a lot of replayability because 
you will not always have the same discoveries uh, on every time you play the game. Some spaces are more prone to uh, malaria, and those are the ones that have this minus one. And uh, this is supposed to be a minus one, even though it only says a one, that's part of the errata, but that, that's no big deal. Panama is a base, so you don't uh, search for anything there. It's a base, as well as Santiago de Cuba, from which you start. Some of the round-shaped spaces don't have a level number, but a letter. Those that have the letter L are possible location of legends, like El Dorado. And the other ones, with the letter D, are deserts that you have to traverse in order to get to some space that has a level. And uh, any space with a level has potentially gold. So we have desert spaces, and there's also spaces with an R, and that signifies a rainforest. So if you want to go to that uh, L space, try to search for a possible legend there, you have to go through this uh, R space, and you see that it has a modifier for uh, possible malaria minus one so it's more likely to get your troops there in uh, trouble with malaria and some are even worse you have uh, this track there with two rainforest spaces now we're in the southern map and of course that track there represents the jungles of brazil the southern map goes all the way south to here and uh, you have the andes and there are spaces, sea spaces, which are uh, labeled Mar del Sur. These cannot be entered until turn three, even though the space says there they cannot be entered during the first three turns. The errata says it's uh, not allowed uh, to enter those spaces until turn three. And you have the same progression here. You see that there are spaces labeled zero. And if you want to get to the uh, juicy three and four spaces, you have to traverse the zero, one, and two spaces first with all the surprises that that will entail. So we keep on moving north. And to our left, we see the records track here. So we have another records track. And to the right, we have spaces to place cards because, yes, this is a card-driven game. Asset cards, strategy deck discards, and strategy deck cards. And here we see the uh, northern part of the southern map. We see the Mar del Sur. And again, Panama. And to move to the northern map, you go through Panama. The game includes 110 strategy cards. And then there's 26 strategy cards that have the conquistadors. We'll show them to you. And then there's 22 asset cards that you add to your expedition. Let's start with the conquistadors. Here, each card represents a historical character. Here you have, for example, Hernando de Soto. And these cards are used to place uh, your forces that comprise an expedition, your uh, horsemen, your uh, soldiers, any uh, other conquistadors that form part of the expedition. So these remain off the map. But when it is time to rally units, conduct diplomacy or combat, each one of these conquistadors uh, adds a modifier, as stated there. And you see that Hernando de Soto is pretty good rallying uh, troops with a two rating. And then some of the conquistadors are replacements. Like here, you have Andres del Sur, and uh, he's a replacement conquistador. So he, he comes into the game if you lose one of your starting conquistadors. And if you read the designer notes, you'll find out who Andres del Sur is. I won't tell you. You can go online to Compass's website 
and you'll find out. Here we have Vasco Núñez de Balboa. You see he has uh, two in rally and diplomacy. And uh, diplomacy is important because you can get a lot of things without fighting, like uh, allied Indian uh, uh, allies. So you have here Pedro de Candia, a lot of zeros. Francisco Pizarro, he conquered the Incan Empire. He has a combat rating of three and two rallying and diplomacy. You have a whole bunch of them, the principal conquistadors. Here you have Vázquez de Coronado. You have here Sebastián de Belalcázar. Here we have another replacement. And I won't tell you how he got there. You'll have to find out. Read the designer notes. Here, Francisco Hernández de Córdoba, another of the uh, conquistadors. And of course, there's some that are better than others. Obviously, a lot of zeros there. Another replacement. Pamphilo de Narváez. This was a historical character. He appears as a replacement. Diego de Almagro. Juan Ponce de León. This one is uh, pretty dear to me because he was the first governor of Puerto Rico. And uh, near where I live, we have the ruins of Caparra, which was his, govern his governor's mansion. There's practically nothing left but the, the uh, you know, a couple of uh, walls there. Gonzalo de Sandoval. Juan Velázquez de León and Hernán Cortés conquered Mexico with about 47, I believe, something like that, uh, Spaniards. Of course, he convinced a lot of uh, Indian uh, tribes to go against the Aztecs, and hence that diplomacy rating of three. And there are others. Now, there's a ton of these strategy cards, and in each turn, you draw up to 10 cards, and you discard two down to eight. So let's take a look at the kind of cards you will see here. Some cards are reaction cards. You play them when your opponents are playing their uh, impulse, like this uh, diplomacy card. This one you play during your impulse, Indian Uprising. Letter from the Crown, Governor's Daughter. Indian Ambush, Action Card, and part of the uh, essence of this game is that uh, the problems that other players have, you are going to cause them by playing these reaction cards, throwing a wrench into their plans. Uh, you can, for example, move your expedition when it is your impulse or you can instead of moving one of your expeditions you can launch an attack by indians in the same space as one of the other players arrest warrant this is played uh and effective if uh you are in disfavor with the governor so you've got to bribe the governor to keep him in uh, to keep yourself in his graces buena suerte ambos creditors demand payment there are combat cards that improve your chances in combat, like this encirclement card. Another re reaction card, hostile chief. Indian uprising. Here we have a legend. Mamaconas again. And then there are some cards that we will see later, well, called the Mano de Dios. But there are Mano de Dios cards here also in this deck. And there's a lot of die rolling in this game, but uh, the Mano de Dios uh, will offset that. We'll, we'll go that into that pretty soon. Here we have more action cards. Missionary, arrest warrant, betrayal. City has a new chief. Disgruntled soldiers. Lots and lots of different actions. You see that some repeat themselves, and the rule is that during your impulse, you can play 
all the action cards that you want and are applicable the only rule is that you can't play uh, an identical action card twice so let's say if you have uh, uh, two theft cards you can't play both theft cards in an impulse so you'll have to save the other one for another impulse but you could play all all other cards if applicable or useful so we have here uh, all these cards these are 110 uh, strategy cards then we go to the asset cards these are cards that you obtain and you place them uh, most of them you place them underneath the card for your conquistadors expedition so let's say you have an expedition by Juan Velázquez de León you place this card beneath and you know that he has his expedition has the medicinal bark asset card that applies only to his expedition remember that in this game each player can have more than one expedition the only exception to that is the mano de dios card and this is a card that you can play either to apply a modifier of plus two to any of your die rolls and you will roll a lot of dice here for different purposes or you can use this card to re-roll uh, dice so there's two ways of using this card and this one you don't place it beneath any expedition just place it in front of you you can use it for any uh, uh, practically any uh, die roll that is needed so those are the asset cards let's take a look at the play raids so you see how all of these components interact with each other here we see the combat results table and uh, you total the number of combat factors you have and you apply the column that expresses uh, an amount that you have for example if you have 22 combat factors you will roll on the 20 column and then the results range from morale checks and you have uh, losses of strength points there there are various modifiers and used in combat like the uh, combat rating of one of your conquistadors you have a table for recruiting costs indian units in a town for example one indian unit is uh, pops up in a city two indian units then we have the governor's gift table and this is the effect of your gift so just giving a gift is not enough you see you have to see how he takes your gift and here is the funds table let's take a look at the other here we side. see the discovery table and discovery is one of the most interesting aspects that i find of this game i haven't played it yet but i'm almost done reading the rules and i like what i'm reading here each space has a level number and you arrive from the sea so you're going to start going in ascending order you're going to encounter level zero space spaces then level one and when a space is not discovered you have to stop and you have to discover what's in there so level zero has a lot of mosquitoes and the best you can hope for is a village uh, level zero then level one you can find a town and level two if you're lucky you can find a city level three it's very likely that you'll find a city and only in level four there's a chance for an empire to appear and, and the bigger the city or town that you find you, you will see that uh, if you find towns and cities it, it will not provide a negative modifier for discovery so if you're in a space with a city it doesn't provide any modifier to a die roll to a discovery die roll now if you're in a space that has nothing and that space is a number one you're going to have a minus four die roll modifier you're going to end up with a lot of mosquitoes there and if you're in a village and you are in a number two space uh you apply in the minus three modifier so uh it's very interesting and because of uh, the die results the uh, empires may appear in different 
places each time you play the game so it has a lot of replayability and a lot of uncertainty you are trying to discover what's actually there and I find that very very interesting one of the most interesting aspects of the game then of course you have the diplomacy table here are the things you can obtain you can obtain food of course and uh, uh, some of the uh, Indian uh, tribes to become your allies there's a diplomacy gold table I believe you can even uh, take gold from your allies I think this is what that's about but not really sure let's take a look now at the other player aid and here we have the plunder gold table of course there's a lot more gold uh, chances of discovering gold getting gold if you're in an imperial capital or imperial city as compared to a town and uh, you have here plunder exhaustion table it comes a time that uh, you took all the gold there is and if that happens you place one of those plundered exhausted markers that we saw on the map when you have to do a morale check uh, you roll the die and apply the result there and here we have the rally table that's to uh, remove morale hits of course if you have morale hits there's more chance that uh, your uh, expedition will suffer and will lose men and then we have the random events table this only applies if you're playing the standard game so uh, here we see the possible random events some are good some are not so good like new legend but then you have uh, smallpox and let's go now to the back side of this player eight and it has the legends discovery table so here you get victory points for discovering legends and uh, could be the Amazon, the Mississippi, the Fountain of Youth, Seven Cities, El Dorado, or Prester John. And you have specific rules that pertain to this aspect of the game. And with that, we come to the end of this unboxing video. This is a game that I enjoy the topic. I enjoyed very much Richard Berg's Conquistador when it was published by Avalon Hill is when I first got my copy and we played that uh, with my brothers and I really enjoyed that so I like these games uh, that are based in history and that give you different outcomes and this one seems to tackle that uh, situation very well with the discovery mechanic so uh, the map is going to be different in terms of cities and empires and towns each time that you play the game and this is a game, I believe, from two to four players. It has a solitaire scenario that we didn't cover. The production values are very high, very nice counters, map, errata is minimum. And uh, this is The Conquistadors, the Spanish Conquest of the Americas, 1518 to 1548. And this is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.